This is the savanna, five million years ago. The ancient savanna is not much different from the savanna of today. It was once dense, boundless forests and impenetrable jungles. Now, because of climate change, these vast areas, covering a quarter of the ancient planet, have become savanna. Savanna is no longer a dead desert. It is as vibrant as a forest, a mountain or the underwater reefs of the world's oceans. The Pliocene epoch is a time of global change in the world of flora and fauna. The world continues to change without stopping for a second. The Pliocene is the final epoch of the Neogene period. It was a time of sharp cooling of our planet. The rich animal world suffered significant losses. Many species of animals that massively inhabited the Earth disappeared in short periods of time. According to one version of scientists, this is because of the cooling. Others suggest that intensified interspecific competition caused the extinction of many ancient animals. The musk ox is a unique animal from the Ice Age that survived the mammoths by 7,000 years. The musk ox is happy about the cold weather. Its thick coat and unpretentiousness in food make this animal completely comfortable. The musk oxen are the most formidable mammals not only in the Pliocene. These animals have survived to this day and still live in four national park reserves. The name itself suggests that the musk ox combines the characteristics of a bull and a sheep. Mighty, incredibly hard horns are the heritage of bulls. But the short tail, which is hidden in the thick fur, inherited the animal from rams. Although the musk ox is more similar to the bull in appearance, its closest relative is the mountain sheep. The wool of the musk ox is thick and long. In some places it can reach one meter. The wool covers the animal completely, except for the nose, lips, horns, and hooves. The body weight can reach from 300 to 650 kilograms. This species is protected by the states. Among the American migrants to the North Asian fauna were the musk ox and the Cyargalia. Cyargalia was a large animal with an elongated muzzle. It resembled the modern wild goat. Its horns were short and rounded at the ends. The animal fed on tree and shrub vegetation. Against the general background of a relatively smooth evolution of Pliocene mammals, two events of fundamental importance for the subsequent history of the Earth's biocenoses stand out. The first of them is the appearance of the vole family in northern Eurasia, whose representatives mastered the feeding on green mass of plants in the small size class. This event is associated with the formation of a fundamentally new zonal type of communities, meadow steppes. However, voles themselves also played and still play a significant role in the formation of soil and plant associations of the steppe zone of the northern hemisphere. Another even more important and possibly related to the first event is the appearance of man. For the Earth's plant and animal communities, the increase in the number and population diversity of the genus Homo had the character of a global ecological catastrophe. South and North America in the Pliocene epoch was favored by glyptodonts, giant fossil armadillos about three meters high and weighing more than two tons. The glyptodont's appearance was the least reminiscent of a mammalian animal. Its huge dome-shaped shell made it look like a land tortoise. Glyptodonts were herbivorous animals as evidenced by the absence of fangs and incisors. The armadillo's main defense against predators was a tail covered with hard bony plates and a mace at the end. Waving this weapon, the glyptodont fought off its enemies, of which there were many in the Pliocene animal world. In the Pliocene, grass still served as an inexhaustible source of food for herbivorous animals. Many leaf-eating animals died out and were replaced by more highly organized ruminants. In Europe and Asia, the vast grassy plains sheltered vast numbers of buffalo, deer, gazelles, and early antelope. The prairies of North America were inhabited by huge herds of deer, camels, mastodons, and velociraptors. There were also short-necked giraffes grazing among the vast herds of other herbivores. Like other ruminants, giraffes fed on grass. Gradually, their necks lengthened and they began to forage for food from the tops of trees. The first hippos also appeared in the Pliocene. They may have descended from some pig-like ancestors. Researchers managed to find out that in those ancient times on the territory of the Earth lived several species of these representatives of fauna. Until today, only two species of hippos managed to survive, and both species live in Africa. It is assumed that originally hippos were forest animals. However, the sharp decrease in the number of trees forced these animals to leave their favorite places and settle near water sources. 
Small and medium-sized predators lived in packs and hunted in groups of several individuals, creating enclosures and ambushes. This hunting strategy is still widespread today. For example, African wild dogs hunt in small packs, usually no more than seven to eight animals. The prey is identified in advance, before the chase begins. As a rule, it is not yet a strong cub. The strategy itself is very simple. The victim is separated from the herd and then relentlessly pursued until it is exhausted. When the poor animal slows down, the pack surrounds the prey and rolls it on the ground, with individual members of the pack grabbing the victim by different parts of the body, nose, tail, and belly. Prey can vary in size, but a small pack of African wild dogs can kill a zebra weighing 10 times more than any of its members. In the late Miocene and early Pliocene, South America was still the preserve of some species of unusual toothless mammals, the so-called incomplete toothed mammals. These included armadillos, tree sloths, and anteaters. There were also large herbivores, such as the toxodon. With its short limbs and broad three-toed feet, this animal resembled a rhinoceros. However, the arrangement of its nose, eyes, and ears suggests that it spent most of its life in water, like a hippopotamus. The most famous carnivorous animal of the Pliocene is the saber-toothed tiger Smilodon, which lived in the northern hemisphere. It was characterized by huge fangs protruding from its upper jaw. Sharpened fangs about 18 centimeters long served as a weapon for Smilodon. After catching up with its victim, Smilodon thrust its fangs into the belly or throat of the victim, and then also with these fangs cut the prey into pieces. Its size Smilodon resembled a modern lion or Amur tiger, and it could weigh from 160 to 400 kilos. Scientists managed to count five species of Smilodon, but none of them survived to our time. Five million years ago, the Kadaba artipithecus existed in what is now Ethiopia. This species was intermediate between great apes and humans. The bone structure of Artipithecus artipithecus indicates an upright walking position. The animal was already trying to walk on its hind legs. Other Pliocene animals. Anankus. Five million years ago, 3.5 meters tall, skull was short, tall, and narrow. Upper tusks were up to three meters long. Lower tusks were not present in adults. Stegotetrabelodon. These animals reached 4 meters in height and 12 tons in weight. These beasts with a difficult name did not live long and became completely extinct within a short period. Machirods. These predators had relatively short tusks, weighed up to 220 kilo, and hunted mastodons. The sea cow Cuesta was up to 9 meters long and weighed up to 10 tons. The Pliocene animal had hooves on the ends of its short limbs. It had no teeth and chewed its food in its mouth with two plates. The cow moved along the bottom by moving its front legs or used a fin. It lived in shallow waters and was presumably a gregarious animal. Toward the end of the Pliocene, a narrow isthmus was formed between North and South America, restoring the connection between the animal life of the two continents. Immediately, two-way traffic along the isthmus emerged and a great mammalian migration began unusual Pliocene animals. Neurolagus, a relative of the hare, was the size of a dog and could reach a weight of 23 kilograms. The ancient animal lived on the island of Majorca and in the absence of predators became very large, well-fed, and sedentary. Horned gophers. Gophers lived in burrows, but it is not clear why the horns were used either for mating displays or for protection from predators. Czar waltzes had body length up to three meters, weight up to 700 kilo, horns up to two minutes wide. Hadrakir seals were up to 2.5 meters long and fed on crustaceans and mollusks. Dromornis birds. They were up to three meters tall and weighed up to 500 kilos. They were herbivorous and could not fly. Giant crocodile. 5.5 million years ago, the crocodile appeared. It was the largest species of crocodile up to 7.5 meters long. This predator was distinguished from other crocodile species by its broad snout. Presumably, the crocodile fed on human ancestors. Laufus viper could reach a length of 3 or 4 meters and weigh up to 26 kilos, making it the largest and most venomous viper in history. The giant blockdowns python could be up to 10, 
meters long and preyed on mammals, birds, and other reptiles. During the Pliocene, there were a large number of antelopes. Many of them were similar in build to bulls. At the end of the Pliocene epoch, there lived Leptobos, very close in their structure to real bulls. In the Pliocene, the ancestors of camels and llamas had elastic cushions instead of hooves on their feet. At this time, camels moved from North America to Eurasia and llamas to South America. Pigs were abundant during the Maya Pliocene. A characteristic feature of the late Pliocene was the appearance of some well-known representatives of megafauna in Eurasia and North America. The woolly rhinoceros and mammoth spread. These large animals survived until the Pleistocene epoch, when they became extinct due to climate change and collision with modern humans. At the beginning of the Pliocene epoch, the first hippopotamuses appeared, but anthrocotherians and giant pigs no longer existed on Earth. Titanus, this prehistoric bird could certainly impress. Adults reached a height of two and a half meters and weighed about 140 kilos. Titanus valerius of the early Pleistocene was very reminiscent of its ancestors, the theropod dinosaurs, which became extinct 60 million years before this bird. Giant birds of prey and theropods have quite similar structures. Movement on two legs, small forelimbs, and a massive head. Australia was isolated from other continents. Consequently, there were no significant changes in the fauna there. Thank you for watching our episode to the end. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed and click on the bell to not miss new interesting videos from the channel.